Hi guys, this is going to be a very quick presentation on applying spaced repetition to mathematics. It's actually going to be a summary of a talk that was given by Paul Robichaud on the 20th of February 2021 in the supermemo.wiki discord. If this sort of talk sounds interesting to you, you should definitely check out the supermemo.wiki discord. There will be a link in the description. So essentially the purpose of this presentation is to ensure that this knowledge doesn't get lost because the talk with Paul was excellent, but unfortunately it couldn't be recorded. So uh, hopefully this will let people who weren't able to attend the talk get some of the insights that uh, those who were able to attend the talk got. And also a second hope is that it will encourage Paul to perhaps crystallize his thoughts into an article or a video because I think there's huge demand for this uh, sort of information. So a summary of Paul is that he is a French quantum physicist and he has been using SRS, uh, specifically Memozyne, for an exceptionally long period of time, around six years now, and he has over 25,000 math cards. So Paul spends around uh, two to three hours per day on Memozyne, and that's composed of both uh, doing his repetitions as well as um, reformulating old cards and making connections between old cards. One thing he said that was very interesting is that during that period, he hasn't actually taken a break <laughs> because it's too fun for him. So he really enjoys actually the process of reviewing and reformulating these cards in the space repetition system. And in terms of benefits, he noted that he has theorems and proofs at the tip of his fingers, which I really liked. Paul has a very simple set of core principles for applying space repetition to mathematics and can be summarized very simply as the 20 rules apply to math too. If you're not familiar with the 20 rules, Paul is referring to the 20 rules of knowledge formulation by Pyotr Wozniak, which was created in 1999. Many people have the misconception that uh, the 20 rules of formulating knowledge and SRS in general cannot be applied to uh, mathematics. Um, they seem to think that mathematics is special or somehow different from other domains of knowledge. Paul reiterated many times that this is not the case and that in his experience at least, um, the 20 rules of knowledge formulation can be applied very successfully to mathematics. He did note that he made many uh, formulation errors at the beginning when he was just beginning to apply space repetition to math, but he slowly improved over time and he is still discovering new principles for math items. So the number one takeaway really from Paul's talk was that knowledge can be retained using space repetition, Math knowledge is a kind of knowledge, and therefore math knowledge can be retained using space repetition. So one of the things that Paul stressed throughout his talk was the importance of atomicity when you're creating math cards. Uh, atomicity is one of the basic 20 rules of formulating knowledge. Um, it basically means that you shouldn't add unnecessary information to your cards. You should try and keep them as concise as possible, since it's much easier to retain uh, the knowledge contained within shorter cards. To give you an example, Paul does not use long proofs. They tended to be around um, six to eight lines maximum. And in each close card, for example, he would only close one line of the proof, which represents um, a simple atomic thought. By doing this, he's able to keep the time per card at just slightly higher than for like a vocabulary card for learning a foreign language, which is very important when you have lots of cards. You don't want the uh, time per card to start rising much beyond that because it will become very taxing to review many cards. One extension Paul makes to the 20 rules in terms of item formulation is that he uh, encourages people to recursively decompose long proofs into subproofs and subproofs of subproofs and so on. Um, this is based on the principle of atomicity that you should try and reduce the amount of unnecessary information contained within each proof. And Paul mentioned that this idea originally came from a paper by Leslie Lamport called How to Write a Proof. One benefit of recursively decomposing proofs into subproofs is that this facilitates um, proof reuse, by which I mean you are able to reuse the atomized subproofs in new proofs. And this creates sort of a web of interconnected math knowledge in your collection. Paul also mentioned the importance of striving for abstraction. He specifically mentioned that we should aim for as much abstraction as possible in our proofs, um, and we should incrementally reformulate our proofs over time in order to gradually climb the ladder of abstraction. And the whole idea behind um, striving for abstraction is that abstraction maximizes the applicability of the knowledge that we're encoding inside the space repetition system. While Paul uses supermemo for other sorts of knowledge, such as for learning about stoicism, he recommends using Anki or Memozyme for learning about math because both of those programs have good support for LaTeX and it's important to use LaTeX so that you can um, incrementally reformulate your cards over time. 
Another benefit of Anki and Memozyon is that if you make an edit to a parent note, the edits that you make will propagate to the child closes, which is um, a very efficient way to uh, batch edit a bunch of cards. Related to reformulation, uh, Paul also mentioned the importance of rewriting proofs. You should rewrite proofs in your own terms. Proofs in books tend to be self-contained and they assume no knowledge of other branches of math. You actually want to rewrite your proofs so that they do uh, take into account all of your prior knowledge because this will help create that sort of web of interconnected math knowledge. Paul also noted that as you make more links, your knowledge tends to get simpler rather than more complex as people might imagine. He also stressed the importance of creating your own math symbols, sort of your own language for different uh, disciplines of math, because in mathematics there's no standardised uh, language for each branch, and you're going to have to avoid overlaps and interference between different branches and between your cards. I asked Paul about the common refactoring patterns that he's noticed himself using over his time using uh, space repetition for mathematics, and he said that as a beginner he would often create cards that were way too long. If we take a look at the example again, um, he's creating these proof cards with only six to eight lines of proof. And uh, for each close card, he's only closing one line of the proof. And he stressed that as being extremely important, especially as a beginner. Now he's been using uh, space repetition for mathematics for a while, he's noticed that the refactorings are more semantic rather than syntactic. He's not so much making the beginner mistake of making cards that are way too long. Instead, his reformulations focus on adding new conceptions, new abstractions and new connections between new knowledge and his prior knowledge. Paul's motivations for learning math include uh, finding new connections, pure curiosity and of course his academic research. He noticed something very, very interesting, which was that 50% of his new cards are actually based on connections from his old knowledge. So it's as if his old knowledge is just generating new knowledge automatically for him. So finally, Paul gave some advice on how to actually start learning math with SRS as a beginner. First, he recommended that everyone should read about SRS item formulation. Um, a good, uh, often recommended article to read is the 20 Rules of Item Formulation by Piotr Wozniak. Then you should go and read about Lamport's recursive proof strategy because that's very important for decomposing proofs into subproofs and maintaining the atomicity of your math cards. Then you should start with a branch of math that actually interests you. Be guided by your learn drive and just pick something that's uh, interesting to you personally. Then as you see gaps in your knowledge, you can fill them as you go. And at some point you may actually prefer Wikipedia where you can have the HTML links between pages um, over books. So that's the end of the presentation. I hope this was useful. I hope this can um, persist this amazing knowledge that we learned from Paul over time. And I hope this also encourages Paul to create some articles or perhaps a video on his experience uh, learning math uh, using space repetition.